Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you and please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Liking is a free way to support the channel and doesn't cost you anything and helps the YouTube algorithm get this quality content out to the traders that really need it. And uh, the Trading 180 process, um, unlike uh, many other um, trading channels is to apply fundamentals and technical analysis right so we apply fundamental analysis to establish our overall directional bias in the medium to long term and then apply technical analysis strategies so supply and demand uh, strategies to time trade entries risk management and establish profit targets so let's get into the week ahead and the week ahead um trading economics uh, sorry, the trading economics site. We um, are looking at, let me zoom in, um, week ahead. So US industrial production, uh, retail uh, sales and earnings from big retailers will be in the spotlight next week. And investors will also follow speeches from several Fed officials um, for any clues on the Fed's next steps. China will provide an update on the economic recovery via industrial production and retail sales and um, a first release of Japan's GDP for the third quarter that's going to be important is also due in Europe. All eyes will be on the UK labour market, um, and that will also be important. Unemployment is definitely in the employment is 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 very important. It's a leading indicator for what the economy is potentially going to do as far as growth or uh, going to be stagnant. Inflation and retail sales releases. So it's definitely some um, some market moving news uh, this week potentially. So let's get into the. Uh, the technicals and then some more in-depth fundamental analysis and we'll start off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index DXY and the DXY it's just a measure of dollar strength, right? And um, I've been saying this for months, ever since uh, June, right? That the path of least resistance has been to the upside. So pretty much all you really, you know, should be doing or should have been doing, it's not financial advice, of course, just what, um, you know, uh, the, the traders in my group, for example, um, have been doing um, and what I've been what we've been talking about fundamentally is really just buying the dollar. Are there going to be some weeks where you got where you get a weak dollar? Of course, you know what I mean. But a weak dollar isn't necessarily a weak. It's just a pullback and profit taking. So there's going to be pullbacks, but overall you can see where the trend is um, to the upside, and the trend isn't driven by a technical analysis, driven by a fundamental analysis, and. Um, and so uh, the, the Federal Reserve at the moment are uh, looking to hike interest rates, right? So Fed's daily says too soon to change rate hike calculations. So we're talking about rate hikes here, right? A rate hike is positive and uh, is the, the intent, I guess it's intended to appreciate a currency. So um, uh, um, also premature to adjust taper given uncertainty, daily says, and comments come after uh, consumer prices rise the most since 1990. So the Fed are kind of forced a bit into um, hiking rates as well, simply because inflation is above their 2% target. So um, they have to appreciate their currency because or uh, use methods to try to appreciate their currency because inflation is actually devaluation. So to counteract or counterbalance um, uh, uh um, a, a devaluing currency, you have to make your currency more attractive, create more demand for it and make it a bit more um, and, and make it appreciate. So um, rate hikes will do that, right? So that's why you're seeing this occur, right? The dollar index is the, is the anticipation of the Fed tapering and hiking interest rates um, in the near future or as I say in the medium term, and the money is, the, the smart money is buying, right? They're buying the rumor, and this is the reason why we're seeing this happen. So if you've been following my videos for any length of time, go back through the last week's videos and the weeks before and the months before, go back to this these, these dates here on my YouTube channel, you will see that all I've been saying is literally the dollar to the upside. So again, uh, there was a, a, a major level here, a major level, but a level of supply that had been touched several times, and the dollar index you're not necessarily looking to trade it, you're just looking for it, uh, looking to uh, use it as confluence, right? Whereas the dollar, um, as a measure of overall strength against the euro, the pound, uh, the yen as well, uh, where is it um, uh, looking to? Um, potentially go and just confirm with price action with fundamentals, right? So it takes out this uh, supply zone. And so for me, there's no real major supply zone. So it's just literally until price proves, until price starts to create that supply there, um, 
literally it's for me it's it's going to be buy trades and pullbacks to certain levels until there is a shift in the fundamentals at some point but for now it doesn't look like it um so that's where the path of least resistance is would i short right now you're in a bit of no man's land so um, when it comes to supply and demand so for me no i'm not looking to um, i wouldn't look to short it based on technicals anyway but um uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty much for me the path of least resistance is still continuing to the upside. Um, dollar yen and the dollar yen again, we had a bit of a pullback, and now uh, we did have a price react to this to this area here. Um, but I think the uh, the Japanese yen um, for me anyway is 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 a sell um, until risk off uh, sentiment comes into the market. But I think if prices can come back to this zone here. I think that is a really nice buy if you do want to be a, a buyer of the japanese yen and short the currency then um that supply zone is decent technically but for me again i'm looking at um uh, this demand zone between this 113.22 and this 112.76 area um seven, sorry 72.6 area uh, pot uh potentially for a buy so let's see what happens um uh, this week if we can get a bit of a pullback into that area for a nice uh, potential buy. Dollar Swiss, uh, and again, like the dollar yen, uh, the dollar Swiss is more of a risk off currency. Money tends to flow into um, the, risk, um, the Swiss franc in a risk off environment. Um, for now, we're probably more risk neutral. And here is where their new demand is. And we can see from the last couple of weeks that the prices did react to that demand zone and then start to go higher. We've got uh, prices reacting slightly off of that uh, supply zone right there. But again, um, I think for me, buy trades, if prices do pull back, that would be where I'd look to um, enter um, somewhere around here, as long as the dollar is obviously um, uh, continuing to potentially high crates. If you're looking to potentially short, now is a, is a decent time to look for short trades uh, on the Swiss franc as far as buying the Swiss franc and shorting the dollar. Um, dollar CAD. Dollar CAD um, again. Prices last week, uh, you know, didn't necessarily they did react to that. There was some money to be made in there if you're trading the intradays for sure, and even if you're trading the daily. But um, with with the dollar uh, with dollar sentiment, I think the um, uh, the path again of least resistance was to the upside. Although the Bank of Canada is for me one of the uh, banks that I'm looking to buy, but not necessarily against the, uh, the US dollar. So um, there potentially could be uh, a shorting opportunity there, but you've got two banks that are looking to high crates. And when you've got two competing um, currencies, as far as two competing central banks looking to high crates, it's a harder trade to take because it's difficult to see which one is gonna, you know, um, uh, uh, is appreciate and one is going to depreciate what you're looking for is more divergences so you're looking for banks central banks that one is looking to appreciate the currency whereas one are either uh, and one is not right so um the uh, dollar cad isn't one of those uh, currencies that i'm looking to trade based off of fundamentals but from a technical analysis perspective this level is lovely to potentially get short and buy the canadian dollar um this area here now um it's gone and again you've probably got some more demand hidden demand in that area there and uh yeah so any kind of pullbacks into this zone would be a decent buy as well if you're looking to buy the dollar against the canadian dollar moving on to the pound dollar so the pound dollar um and we were predicting this um i say predicting but it was uh we were saying this again for the past when, when prices were literally up here we were saying that um, you know, we, I didn't believe that the uh, Bank of England would uh, high crates, or it would be, an, if they did high crates, it would be, a, I guess, more of a more of a dovish hike because of uh, stag uh, stagflation fears. So, um, and look what pretty much what's happened since. Again, if you don't, you know, if you haven't been watching me for a long time, go back to this week's um, or that week's um, uh, uh, YouTube videos, the twenty sixth, twenty first, twenty seventh. It'd probably be what the 20 maybe the 25th of october 22nd of october right and look at my analysis and what i was saying at this area right and then look at what you you know what you pretty much seen when it comes to um you know our fundamental analysis and it's not elliott waves this is wave one this is wave two wave three wave four wave five that's nonsense it's all to do with fundamental analysis and how we 
can uh you know predict um you know with i wouldn't say accuracy 100 percent accuracy nothing is 100 percent, but just from the perspective of where prices are likely to go um you know you can see pretty much what and what's happened right so again looking for a pullback into this zone um didn't quite get it unfortunately um but i was looking at this area uh, for a pullback um, deeper into that area for a potential short trade unfortunately I just didn't get that trade so um, but where we are now I think the prices will continue to go lower especially when you consider that the um, the UK economy all right economic growth slows down right so the UK economy grew less than the Bank of England forecast and consumer spending showed signs of weakening leaving the chances of an interest rate increase in December in the balance, right? So Lizzie Burden reports. So again, there's rumors that the uh, Bank of England may want to uh, hike rates in December, but they need uh, economic growth. They need GDP to grow. And if GDP is, is, is stagnating or didn't grow or uh, the numbers came out disappointing, then um, unfortunately they can't, they, they, they can't hike rates. Um, or it'd be economic suicide to high rates. So again, the path of least resistance for the pound is to the downside. I'm not saying that it's going to go down this week 100%. You could have a week where it pulls back, right? Prices have to pull back to um, a potential level, right? And we don't know how long that price um, or prices will pull back. So, or how long it will take for prices to pull back. But the point being is that the direction of travel should be looking to short these trades yeah, in these areas at levels of uh, supply, right? That should be where, well, that's where I am looking to uh, take my trades. And if it takes a, this week, for example, takes five, six, seven days to do that, does that mean that I should have been buying the uh, the, the, the pound because prices went higher? No, that's, that's, that's absolute nonsense. What you've got to do is look to buy at value. And this is, was seen as a bargain area for the pound, Right, this is an expensive area for the pound potentially. And if we get a pullback, that's what we're looking to do. There's so many traders that say that they're trend traders, but yet we'll start to counter trend trade and get caught on both sides. You know, it doesn't make any sense buying the pound for me. Um, if um, you've got you know uh, headlines like that, and also as well from Think ING, um, Brexit is back, so there's more risk sentiment problems. Uh, there's growing talk of EU suspending its trade deal with the UK. Should the British government make unilateral wholesale changes to the Northern Ireland Protocol, that would revive the risk of a no deal scenario. But fresh Brexit uncertainty may actually not uh, have. Um, as big a market impact as perhaps presumed. So expect the euro pound near um, uh, 0.85 cents at the year end. But um, it may not have the um, the impact, but it's there, right? Brexit is um, now making its way back into the headlines and none of us know. So a lot of uncertainty around the pound, um, again, will add to um, pound sell-offs in my opinion. So any kind of pullbacks, looking for uh, short trades for me, um, and, and especially with the uh, with the dollar uh, still looking to potentially high rates. Um, Euro dollar, and the euro dollar again, uh, been saying this for a while. Look, I was looking to get short at some pullback. I was hoping that prices would have pulled back to this area here, this 116.80, but it didn't. Um, but what we've seen now is really prices again continue to go to the downside. The dollar is the stronger out of the uh, out of the three major currencies, the euro and the pound. Um, so any pullbacks into this supply zone for me are buy trades. Um, I'm talking buy trades for the dollar, so you're looking at um, supply zone sells. Um, and uh, would I buy the euro at this point in time? Um, no, until the euro really starts to get uh, their their economic activity back. Um, and I think uh, there are problems. So uh, Merkel advises demand ECB exit strategy as inflation risks rise. So economists see an upside risk to Euro region inflation outlook and German government's economic advisors published latest report. So um, again, everywhere suffering with high inflation. So um, it doesn't make sense for the European Central Bank to continue to um, you know, um, uh, print money because they're just gonna make inflation worse. They, they continue to de devalue the de devalue the currency and um in germany uh they, they they're having problems because um from a manufacturing perspective germany are europe's powerhouse so um an economic engine really and they're suffering with high inflation which means they've got to pass it on to the consumer which then means that um 
uh, if your consumers are paying paying high prices, then you it, it, it adds to potentially um, uh, uh, um, economic, uh, um, I guess, growth fears, right? Because there's less money in your pocket. And, um, and so Germany's Council of Economic Advisors have urged the European uh, Central Bank to publish a strategy for normalizing its ultra expansive monetary policy in light of building inflation risks. So they have to do something to tackle that inflation, right? They have to do something. And if they don't at least start to um, taper at some point, then inflation could get out of hand. And that's what um, uh, Merkel advisors are talking about when it comes to the um, uh, inflation. But until the central bank actually come out and say what they're going to do. I think, again, the path of least resistance is to the upside. Again, we've been saying it ever since uh, uh, June, right, and predicting this trend to the downside, right? We've had periods where prices have gone higher, but overall should have really been shorting and continue to short. Anyways, uh, any pullbacks to supply zones for me are uh, buying opportunities as far as uh, for, the, for the US dollar. We've got the Australian dollar, and again, um, Australia are lagging behind when it comes to um, uh, uh, their central bank monetary policy, and the Fed are you know well ahead of the uh, the um, the RBA. So you can see in this area here, um, there's not too many demand zones that are going to stand in the way of fundamentals, right? So delete that um, that demand zone, and then you've got some supply here so any pullbacks i think to this area would be decent for a uh, a short trade although i'm not um trading this currency pair myself but um if you are then i think that area there that 74 round number is decent for a potential short trade long trades again buying the australian dollar against the the us dollar if you are looking to do that then um, now is actually a decent time to look for any kind of long trades and um uh, gold right so gold uh, we've definitely broken through this level. The more times the level is touched, the weaker it becomes, right? There, and you can see where price is pretty much just you know blasted through, and that's really because of inflation. So, uh, gold, right, is back in vogue with bulls loving faster inflation. Again, if inflation for the U.S. dollar is going higher, right, so prices jumped um, as U.S. inflation. Um, sorry, as US inflation at the fastest pace since 1990, and that's boosting demand f uh, as, for a hedge as Fed keeps rates low. So um, gold is a hedge against inflation. So inflation being the highest or rising the fastest pace since uh, 1990, um, obviously that's gonna um, have get the gold bulls and gold bugs um, buying more gold, right? And um, that's the reason why you're seeing you know, this, uh, uh, this this type of price action um, until really the Fed do start to um, potentially get a cap or get a, put a lid on inflation if they can then you will start to see gold start to sell off right but for now you've got dollar rising in a sense that um, the uh, the Federal Reserve are looking to high crates and that is bullish for the dollar but you've also got the gold bulls who um, are looking to buy gold to hedge um, the dollar right so you do have periods in time where you have strong dollar although they typically work inversely to each other you've got um, uh, gold can and, and, and the dollar can actually uh, rise and fall at the same time and this is one of those periods where you're getting a stronger dollar um, or an appreciating dollar but also appreciating gold because you have two different um, schools of thought where um, again the dollar uh, guys are saying well we're going to anticipate a rate hike which is appreciative of, of the dollar but then you've got the gold bulls which are saying well um, inflation is at you know um, is rising at um, um, uh, highs not seen since 1990s so we're looking to buy gold so any pullbacks into this demand zone if you can get it is is decent but also as well we're coming up into a bit of a high not necessarily the the um the all-time highs of gold but we're coming up into a decent supply zone where price could start to react and some profit taking off of their um off of that 1888 to 1916 uh, anyways guys that's it for this week i hope you have a great trading week uh, again don't forget to like subscribe and share with your fellow colleagues and i'll speak to you soon until the next video uh, take care